Fabri, um, spearheaded the uh, research around um, kangaroo mother care. And this is a, um, a really super example, um, a super example of how research can inform policy and practice. Um, I think that's, a, that's um, a great example of that. And Niels is going to be talking uh, in particular about the first 1,000 minutes um, and the neuroscience of breastfeeding. Thanks, Niels. Thank you very much. So the first thousand days actually begins with the first thousand minutes. And there's some neuroscience that I've spent the last 12 years digging out. And very briefly, it's connected to a broader body of neuroscience, uh, particularly early childhood adversity, toxic stress, translating developmental science into lifelong health. Taking from David and Simon, this is a continuation of that. But childhood, has to begin somewhere. And a lot of the policy doesn't recognize the role of the infant and the neonate, which has been my particular focus. And in terms of infant mental health, we now have a position paper that really it begins with infants. And it does arise out of infant mental health. And the particular right to be given nurture and safety, sleep, there are particular issues that are more important for the neonate. So, uh, one of my icons here is Punksep, and to understand this neuroscience, uh, again, I've got 1,000 seconds to explain this to you, and so uh, I'm not making explanation, this is a high-level overview. This is the neuroscience. Uh, there is DNA that makes everything living. Uh, the brain interprets that life, and then it makes behaviors. Uh, the DNA, uh, we have switches on it that respond to the environment. The environment is therefore key. The environment tells the brain what's going on in it so that the brain is developed accordingly. And you can see how it's growing here. The critical issue about brain is connections, wiring in the brain. And wiring takes place during sleep cycling. Sleep cycling is driven primarily by smell of mother. And that smell is responsible for brain wiring. No explanations, just statements that I'm making it this way. But here is a statement from the United States. The brain architecture and skills are built in a bottom-up sequence. Neural circuits that process basic information are wired earlier than those that process more complex information. We need to build it up from the beginning. I think that's coming through from previous speakers already. Higher circuits is much more difficult if the lower level circuits aren't connected properly. This is can, part of the Heckman and everything else that, that we're familiar with. But now what we have to hear is evolutionary biology or life sciences theory connecting this neuroscience all together, uh, interpreting what's going on with the DNA in the brain and our behaviors. Highly conserved neuroendocrine behaviors is another word for instincts. <laughs> instincts are not PC, but these are actually a summary statement of a particular behavior we see at birth. We call this self-attachment or breast crawl or various things, and they're very highly conserved, as in the DNA. In neuroendocrine, we can't see those. We can see these behaviors, but without understanding the underlying neuroscience, those behaviors are random. And so, what's the common thread? It's the environment. For species such as primates, the mother is the environment. Nothing an infant can or cannot do makes sense, except in the light of mother's body. It's in the mother's body that this whole highly conserved neuroendocrine behavior is working. It doesn't matter if I'm in a jungle with leaves or in a concrete jungle. This is that environment. Skin-to-skin -skin contact is what makes the neuroscience. The human is a primate based on skin-to-skin -skin contact that holds all of this together. So now, birth and breastfeeding. At birth, breastfeeding. There's a few things that begin before, so I'll quickly fill in the slide here in its entirety. Simone mentioned resilience and health and disease in the population. This is a summary of this neuroscience that you've heard from two previous speakers. But it begins with transition. 
It begins with transition to extra uterine life at the very, very beginning. And so when the baby is here, this here in a heat camera has got warmth, 36 degrees compared to 33 degrees, nutrition and protection. This is the environment that supports transition to extra uterine life. And one can't separate those things. They are part of highly conserved neuroendocrine behaviors from the DNA that work uh, through the brain that express themselves in these behaviors. Birth, skin to skin contact begins there. Bonding begins at right this minute in the first thousand seconds of life. And it's this particular circuit over here which connects the emotional amygdala brain to the social frontal cortex. And up here, this is showing the connection absent in preterm infants. But when you add parent to preterm infants, you get the connection. And so bonding begins at birth. This is the circuit which we then want to measure. And so at birth, you put a baby's brain into an MRI machine and it's got resting state networks. It's got a whole set of default mode networks and there I've named them and I'm now superimposed them. Babies are born to wire their emotional brains to their social brains at birth. And so that approach is the driver for breastfeeding. Notice that my breastfeeding has feed, sleep, cycling in it. And that's just a notice. Uh, just a week ago, we finally updated the 2016 version of the Cochrane Review, uh, which is the early skin-to-skin -skin contact for mothers and their healthy newborn babies. And this shows that breastfeeding is the outcome. In, in, in brackets, skin-to-skin -skin causes breastfeeding. It is the outcome of breastfeeding. And so this, in turn, leads to a secure attachment, as I've labeled here, the psychobiological roots of early attachment. Yeah, we talk about attachment, but then we measure it at the year of one or two years, and where did it come from? We already heard it came from way before. Uh, Simone, yes, in those first thousand days, including the 28%. <laughs> and so uh, this now requires a sensitized, attuned, parent. The sensitization I want to submit to you is also the work of the first thousand minutes of life. It takes a thousand minutes because this baby has to rewire that mother's brain. And in the early stimulation periods, oxytocin, prolactin, and amygdala, and specifically dopamine, become connected to these social emotional brain centers. And this oxytocin-dopamine connection is the neurological foundation of resilience. Resilience is wired in the newborn brain in the first thousand minutes of life. We've actually measured this in Cape Town. In the original study that I conducted in 2000 and published in 2004, and Bigelow came to measure, and she could show in the Cape Flats that this is the dose of skin-to-skin -skin contact in the first day of life, first thousand minutes, and this is the Q sort, emotional sensitivity in the mother. We're measuring the mother's brain. Eight months later, the first 24 hours of skin-to-skin -skin contact dose, and the same applies to the CATS, the teaching scale score. There is a critical period of maternal sensitization taking place in the mother in the first thousand minutes critical period was not something I was taught in this very lecture hall. Actually, it was just across the road here when I was at medical school. The neuroscience is clear that this is indeed what we're dealing with. And it's mutual. It's mind, brain, and body of the mother and the baby being connected in this process. And so critical period, this skin-to-skin -skin contact is wiring this brain as well as the mother's brain. And the father's. <laughs> We forget the father very often in this. Uh, this is a research that was actually done at Crotiscure, uh, and this was a pilot case we did in a private hospital. And here you will see that birth does not impact prolactin. Skin to skin lowers prolactin. This is the Crotiscure data. These are private hospital data, and these are birth data. Prolactin is lowered because of a surge of dopamine. And so the dopamine connection to oxytocin, I want to submit, fathers should do 30 minutes of skin-to-skin -skin contact 
in every single birth, in every single hospital in South Africa. That would transform. This critical period is not just a mother-infant, it's the father, it's the family, it's also society. It begins in the first thousand minutes of life. And so, this maternal sensitization. I'm screaming through this. Are you all there? Here are a number of things that are taking place in the first thousand minutes. Transition, regulation, bonding, breastfeeding, maternal sensitization. And my slides don't have time to tell you that there's also microbiota. There's many other things that are happening here. And it begins at birth. So the first thousand seconds is basically the first hour. And then the first thousand minutes. And then we have a thousand hours, six weeks. Notice a thousand pattern. This requires a rocket launch, if you like. It's the pad that matters. Carnival. And so immediate is the critical deliverable here. Just briefly then, toxic stress is defined as the absence of the buffering protection of adult support. And toxic stress, uh, this skin-to-skin -skin contact is our normal biology. Toxic stress is a severe stressor for every single term baby. They have some resilience to cope with it. Preterm babies do not. And therefore, this toxic stress, we now know what the epigenes are doing. Uh, we now know what the neurobehaviors are doing that follows with this. And we know how the life sciences theory impacts it from mice. And then we've looked at humans, and we can see in MRI studies that the infant development is contingent to the closeness of the maternal care. And then you get a spectrum. Bottom line, zero separation. A public health message. Mothers and babies should never be separated. And therefore, this immediate is the critical deliverable for public health. And so, I have good news to share. Epistos stands for immediate parent-infant skin-to-skin. Epistos is the name of a, under, of a large study that we've just received funding for, and this is the underlying scientific rationale. Uh, we want to protect transition, prevent the cascade of dysregulation that leads uh, to uh, adversity, both immediate and long-term. Specifically, mortality. We wish to lower this mortality because KMC only starts on stable babies. And I want to suggest that these babies are the ones that we could save. So this is funding we've now received from the Gates Foundation. And the World Health Organization is conducting this. We will study this in five countries, in low-income countries. Uh, and uh, we will randomize babies at birth, and they will have zero separation uh, compared to those that are getting standard care. And we will measure mortality at 72 hours and 28, hours, 28 days. And in this way, test this neuroscience. And this, we think, will provide a policy for low-income countries. But low-income countries' doctors are trained in middle-income and high-income countries. And therefore, we need also to, uh, and we're looking for funding now, to, to do what we call epistos, the mechanisms research, where, uh, in fact, we can show that survival is all very well in the low-income country. But the thrive has nothing to do with low-income and middle-income and high-income country. It has to do with human beings. It has to do with life. It has to do with the neuroscience of birth and breastfeeding. And so the first thousand minutes is when all of this is happening. The transform is, I want to end, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Passion delivery. Thank you, Nils. Thank you very much. I'm sure each of us is going to walk out now as, as uh, believers and advocates for uh, kangaroo mother care. Um, thank you very much for that. Okay, um, the fourth uh, presentation.